Are you a real estate investor looking to sharpen your skills or a newbie looking to become one? You're in the right place. Welcome to Where Should I Invest? Real Estate Investing in Canada with your host, Sarah Larvey. So just to get an idea, maybe, you know, share with us something that somebody recently purchased. Um, if, if you could share some numbers, just because everyone, you know, lives in, in different areas and, and what's cheap for them or what cash flows for them could be a, a different definition. So, um, you know, maybe just share with us like a couple like typical deals that you found, um, you know, for your investor clients and what that looked like in terms of like purchase price, if there's a reno budget, like rents, you know, market rents, ARV, if, if you can share some of that. So then, you know, whoever wants to write it down can and, uh, you know, get a, a better idea of, of what that market really is. For sure. Are your clients, do you find the listeners mostly looking for the like duplex, triplex type of investments or a little bit larger? I mean, I think it's a mix, but I think ultimately, you know, yeah. what's the ROI based on different strategies um, and, and what seems to work or what are you seeing that works really well in Sudbury? I mean, obviously I'm sure there's more than one thing, but if you had to kind of yeah. average it out. So there's a, there's a lot. The problem is, so a lot of people want to do the burst strategy, which is the best strategy to grow My favorite. exponentially fast, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But the, the only problem now is it's just everyone knows about it. Mm -hmm. That's what everyone wants. And everyone's competing for those same properties. So the, the key, I like, you rarely find a vacant property in Sudbury. If you put vacancy in your conditions, there's no way they're accepting your offer. So a lot of the success that I've seen from a lot of my clients have been investing in properties where they actually do the cash for keys or they have conversations with the tenants or they actually move tenants to their other properties while they're doing the renos and the, the refinance and, and a burr, a burr strategy. So it's now it's like dealing with tenants a lot, which is where the opportunity is um, because you're, you're getting a lot of the low rents because in Sudbury, not only has our prices gone up, but our rents have shot up in the last two and a half years. So if you're, if you have anyone that's been in their apartment for longer than a, a year and a half, they're below market rent by quite a bit. So yeah. that affects the, your, your cash, your cash flow when, when you're purchasing a property. In terms of an example, a lot of my clients, they're buying duplexes or so a triplex, you're probably paying 350 to 400 for something that needs work. And then, so for example, one that just sold that needed a ton of work, um, the basement unit had a flood, but it was completely renovated before they were going to sell it. Then there was two units. They were identical units, um, full of smoke. Like it was some of the most disgusting units I've been in um, and full of just dirt everywhere. I just don't know how they lived in the unit like that. But so it sold for 380. Um, the reno, I had a client that probably guesstimated 80 if you subcontract your own subcontractors or 120, if you're going to just have a general contractor, just take care of it yourself. Um, that's two new kitchens, two new bathrooms, all new flooring throughout um, drywall. And then just a couple emergency expenses as they always come up. I'm sure, you know, yeah. and, um, and I, in that case, then you'd refinance. We were conservative at the 520, but you could probably get closer to the 550, 560, um, depending on how nice the work you did. Um, what kind of kitchens you put in and, and all that. So the, and then you're getting 15, 15 and 1100 in the basement for, for rents. So that, that's the Not triplex, bad. the most recent one. Yeah. I mean, it, it's so, interesting yeah. because, you know, here you're not finding, you're not finding a purchase price of, of that unless you're, you know, again, I think you're probably three and a half hours now in 2022, you know, in either direction out of the GTA. I mean, I'm sure you can find it if you go West, if you go East, if you go North, uh, you know, I think North Bay, Sudbury are, are some, some good opportunities for 2022. Um, you know, if somebody is not interested in the renos, um, and you mentioned, obviously the rents have gone up year over year. I mean, somebody that's there for two years, is already way below market rents. Um, I think from a conversion standpoint, those new units, uh, not subject to rent control will be great, but the other two are not. Um, so I guess my question is, you know, if, if somebody doesn't want to be dealing long with long-term, is there a short-term midterm type of strategy? That's, um, an option out there. Like, is there an Airbnb market in Sudbury? Surprisingly, there is, <laughs> and not many people are taking advantage of it yet. Um, I certainly want to, 
I, I don't have any of my units as Airbnb yet because I'm, I'm trying to do the least amount of headaches possible. And I, I haven't figured out the systems yet to be, get it, to be able to have, I don't want to have a call saying, Oh, the cleaning lady didn't go, go through. Right. So I'm trying to figure that out, but I have a few friends, a few clients that are doing the Airbnb. Um, they're almost getting double the amount of rent on a, who are the, who are the renters like, or the, the clients, like, are they homeowners in between houses or can doing construction on their own houses or are they tenants or are they tourists? Contract employees mostly. So I know the mines get a lot of contract employees. They bring up executives. So that's some of the higher end rentals. Um, not so much vacation properties. Um, although there are a few in the outskirts cause we do have a ton of lakes out here. So that would be an opportunity. I know there's a few million dollar properties that are being bees uh, right now on our biggest lake on Ramsey. Um, and then there's there, there, yeah. So mostly it's contractors that are coming up here. They want a short stay week, two weeks at a time. And sometimes it's even companies that pay for it. Mm hmm. Yeah. I, I mean, I love that strategy. Like when I first started, I was doing the whole long-term rental piece. Not that there's anything wrong with that, you know, but then I got into the short-term stuff. Then I got into the midterm stuff. I'm like, this is, you know, the sweet market. Of course there's like pros and cons to every single strategy and every rental strategy. But um, you know, when I look at like some of the cash flow and then just the, t like, the types of clients and how you have a little bit more control, or I should say a lot more control, um, it, it becomes in the right locations, not everywhere is going to work for this, but in the right locations, it becomes the opportunity of choice for now until the government starts meddling into our business again, which I'm sure is, you know, happens every, every so often. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, so from, from your standpoint, let's talk about your portfolio. Is it all in Sudbury? All in Sudbury. Yeah. I just know the market so well. I feel it's the best place for me. I, I'm looking to expand eventually, but for now, Sudbury and then maybe, oh, the, the island actually. It's, it's not really a district that I work in, but the island is about an hour drive from here. And it's the biggest, largest freshwater island in the world, Manitoulin Island. And that has great Airbnb potential, tons. Mm -hmm. You know what, that's, that's probably a brand new area that we haven't ever discussed on the show. Yeah, yeah. I know I'm not trying to get into it, but that's just a cool opportunity. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I wouldn't mind looking into it a little bit more, but is that, so that's an Airbnb opportunity for, for who would be the client though? Vacations, hunters, fishermen, um, families just going out. Like, I know that's, that's our go-to place when we just want to need a weekend off. Just okay. head there. There's a bunch of opportunity. It's just such a great place. So not so much the guys that are working in the mines or the ladies that are working in the mines. Um, but I think that like, so the, you know, what I do like, there's a lot of fundamentals, obviously that that market meets, you know, being in, in, you know, the area where there are mines and there's opportunity, there's schools, there's universities, there's hospitals. I think the population yeah. is, is growing, which is good. Um, what insights can you share maybe about Sudbury? I mean, you know, obviously the, the ones that I discussed, but anything else that like, you know, just being local. Yeah. So the biggest thing would be the, the Kingsway entertainment district. So yeah, we do have those call. We do have a, a university and two colleges, which is a large majority of our jobs. Um, we have the hospital, which is like the hub of the North. If like Timmins or North Bay and some of the further out cities, they need a, a bigger surgery, they come to Sudbury. So some of the Airbnbs are for that as well. Um, and then we have the mines, which employs a lot of people. But we also have the CRA, which employs over 3,000 people, which is about 2% of our population. And those are all great high paying jobs, homeowner jobs and good renters. Um, but the Kingsway Entertainment District, is, it, it's, um, a, it's gonna be a big casino a new arena and they're going to have a ton of like shops, um, just different, uh, entertainment things in this district. So one of the biggest developers in Sudbury has been working on this for a couple of years. Understandably, when there's a big project, there's always some naysayers complaining about it. So once they get past that, um, obviously there's pluses and minuses of where they decided to put it, which is a little bit further out of downtown. Um, which is what most people are complaining about, but ultimately that's going to create a bunch of jobs. Uh, a lot more opportunity to visit Sudbury. We're going to be able to have better concerts in Sudbury, a new arena for both of our professional sports teams. So they, they see potential in the KED and building it and having enough population to, to fuel it and, and get income from it. So 
that's that's a good sign for Sudbury, I, I see, and I'm excited for it to be up and running so I can go enjoy it. <laughs> Thanks so much for listening to Where Should I Invest with your host, Sarah Larby. Make sure to listen in next time. We'll catch you on the next episode of Where Should I Invest.